So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Asher, for inviting me and for the introduction. Um, this talk is uh, called Retomaton, a newer symbolic language modeling with retrieval automaton. It is based on a joint work with Frank and Junshin, who are uh, PhD students here at LPI, Sudipta and Dan Roth, who are um, from Amazon, and Graham Newbig, who is a professor here at LPI. And um, a bit about uh, what I did earlier. So I joined LTI um, last summer and in my PhD, I worked on uh, neural models for programming language processing, where I focused mostly on models that uh, try to model source code by leveraging the, the, the known syntactic structure of code rather than just treating code as a sequence of tokens. So, um, we worked on models for, for example, for generating natural language uh, given source code, a task that uh, can be also uh, be seen as summarization of source code and also language modeling by uh, modeling the tree rather than uh, the sequence of tokens. I also worked a little on graph neural networks and their limitations. So uh, in one project, we introduced a problem called over squashing that has become um, has become uh, like the, the reference to this uh, problem has become quite popular. Uh, it's a problem that affects uh, most graph neural networks regardless of the specific architecture. Uh, we also worry a little on the expressivity of graph attention networks. We found, for example, that the famous graph attention networks uh, do not quite, uh, are, are not as, as expressive as we expect them to be and proposed a fix called graph attention networks v2. Uh, but today I won't talk about any of this. Today I'll uh, show you how we can take a trained language model, in this case, a transformer language model. And um, given this language model and a corpus, we can construct a weighted finite state automaton that has a dynamic transition function. The creation of this automaton is completely unsupervised and it can be constructed uh, from either the original training data, the same training data that the language model was trained on, or from another domain. And this synergy between the neural uh, language model and the uh, symbolic automaton improves the uh, accuracy over the base language model without any additional data or additional training. Uh, by the way, feel free to uh, ask questions, um, raise your hand or, or just, um, uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask question in any point of the talk. Uh, so uh, just to verify that we're on the same page, most of you probably know this, uh, language modeling, it's uh, one of the most fundamental tasks in NLP. Uh, given a vocabulary of words, a language model is any function that provides a probability for every sequence of words, W1 to WN. So for example, um, if we have the sentence, sentence the president is Joe Biden, uh, the probability that uh, of this sentence can be 0 0.0012, for example, by uh, a certain language model. Uh, most language models are autoregressive, meaning that they decompose the probability, the joint probability of W1 to WN, all the words, to the uh, product of every word WI given all the previous words, also called the context. And most uh, neural language models do that by training a neural network, in this case, uh, a transformer that tries, given the context, the, the, the words from one to I minus one to predict the next word. Now, if we train this transformer uh, on enough examples, it might uh, model the, the, the language well and be able to generalize well uh, to unseen context and unseen sequences of words. So for example, uh, one of the most famous language models these days is GPT-3. Uh, it, it, uh, it is basically a very large transformer that was trained on uh, vast amounts of data, basically the entire internet. And it can uh, generate text given uh, on almost every subject. So this text that GPT-3 generates can either be informative but it was also shown that GPT-3 can um, generate text uh, in a more um, uh, creative way. Um, another uh, variant of language models is retrieval-based language models. 
that um, the idea here is that sometimes the, the capacity of the language model is not enough to fit the entire training set uh, in, its, uh, in its weights, in its parameters. So instead, retrieval-based language models interact with the training set or a data store um, while they make their prediction. So for example, um, they might send a vector or a query to the training set or the data store and retrieve back some, uh, some, uh, some data that will help it to uh, perform its predictions. So for example, uh, if we have the context of the, the model can send a query vector to the uh, data store and get back some data that will help it predict the next war, the president, and then continue iteratively, iteratively query the data store until it finally predicts that the president is Joe Biden. So if you think about it, this, this ability allows the model to not only memorize that the president is Joe Biden, but instead just have the ability to uh, ask the right question uh, from the data store. So instead of memorizing all the information they, 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 in, in its parameters and its weights, the learning, um, the language model only needs to, to know how to query, query the data store and retrieve this information. Um, this, um, um, this conversation with the data store can either be at training time, so the model learns how to, uh, how to retrieve and how to incorporate the data that it retrieved, but it also can be performed at test time only. So we can take a language model that was trained as usual, as a, a very standard language model and in, um, incorporate this uh, retrieval mechanism at test time. One prominent example uh, of such models is the k-nearest neighbor language model, also called KNNLM. Um, and what KNNLM does is as follows. It takes a, an already trained language model and now what pre-processing, um, where, well, this, this is the pre-processing step that follows the training. So we first had the training, we get a, a trained language model. And then for pre-processing of the next retrieval step, we take the training set, which can be the same training set that the neural, um, the neural language model was trained on. This training set is composed of many documents. And now for each document, uh, we go through every pair of context and next word. We feed the context into the trained language model. So this is a forward pass, not a training step. It's a forward pass. And we take the hidden state of the transformer while reading this context and we save it. We save this uh, vector that encodes the context. And with this context, we also save the next word that should be predicted um, given this context. Now we do that also for the next context that now has Joseph Robinette and the next word is Biden. We do the same thing to get uh, the next pair of a key and a value where the key is the encoding of the context and the value is the next word. And we also do this for uh, the next word of a junior and add that to our uh, collection of keys and values until we have the complete data store of keys, which are vectors in the size of the hidden size of the language model and values, which are simply integers. Each value is simply the index of that word in the vocabulary. Then uh, we take this language model or that uh, I remind you that it's an already trained language model. And at test time, if we have a test context of the president is, what we do is we take the hidden state of the transformer uh, while, uh, while try attempting to generate the next word. And we search for the nearest neighbors of that hidden state in the data store. So we perform the uh, KNN search of that hidden state. And imagine that we got, we retrieved these three um, context and word pairs from the data store. We compute the L2 similarity, which is basically the negative L2 distance between the hidden state of the test context and the uh, and the, each of the keys. We perform softmax and we get a distribution PKNN over the words um, 
whose uh, who are values uh, that were retrieved among the uh, the k nearest neighbors. So this is a distribution basically over all the words in our vocabulary, except that um, most words in this uh, in this distribution have a zero probability, and only few of these words have a non-zero probability that is based on the L2 distance between their keys and the test, uh, the test time hidden state. Now we take this, pro, um, this PKNN and simply interpolate that with the PLM, which is the standard probability that uh, the transformer outputs using a constant uh, lambda, which is the uh, a simple uh, coefficient, uh, a scalar coefficient, and using this uh, interpolated probability, we can predict the next word of Joe. Are there any questions about this? I know that uh, it's a little um, complicated, uh, but uh, feel free to ask any question about it. Okay, maybe I'll give an example uh, and then questions question will pop up. Um, in the next time step, we do exactly the same thing. We predicted the word Joe in the pre previous time step. So now in the next time step H uh, T plus one, we get a new hidden state uh, H of T plus one. We again search for its nearest neighbors in the data store. We retrieve the nearest neighbors, compute the L2 similarity softmax, and we get a distribution over the words in the vocabulary. Um, and we interpolate that distribution with the distribution of the standard transformer uh, language model. And we can predict the next word. Um, are there any questions now? Okay. Um, the benefit of this uh, KNNLM is that it allows to reduce the perplexity in this case by two point, which is quite a lot from uh, 18, 0.65 to 16.65 on a data set called the wiki text. The, the metric that we measure here is perplexity where lower is better. And KNNLM allows to reduce the perplexity over a trained language model without any additional data and without any additional training. The only thing we did is just searching for nearest neighbors at test time. Additionally, uh, so, so far it was about creating a data store from the same training data, but we also uh, can create a data store doing um, the uh, this saving of keys and values on another domain. So in this case, uh, we, um, we took a model that was trained on the news domain and tested it on the law domain. The base language model achieves a perplexity of 106, which is uh, quite a lot, but it is expected because of the the model was not trained on this domain, but if we construct the data store um, from the new domain, it allows reducing the perplexity down to 12. Um, so this uh, KNNLM allows us to uh, perform efficient domain, domain adaptation without any additional training on the new domain, just by saving uh, keys and values from the new domain. Any questions? Okay. The problem, the major problem in, in KNNLM is that it performs this uh, K nearest neighbors search for every generated token. Um, and the, the, the computational cost, the time, the latency it costs to perform this KNN search is much greater than the, uh, the time it takes to do a forward pass, which is what is needed to generate a single token in uh, a standard uh, transformer language model. So, this uh, uh, improved results of KNNLM come at a cost of a much lower orders of magnitude slower um, uh, speed at test time. I see there is a, there is a question here. Uh, Sid asks, asks, is it memory efficient to store all the context vectors when the text to predict becomes larger since the context vectors encapsulate every word before each target word? Uh, I agree that is, this is not very memory efficient. Uh, some works do that, do this uh, saving of the data store in large data sets. Uh, sometimes this uh, data store does not fit into the memory and it needs to be, uh, to be um, 
stored in a database, sorry, I, I said a data set, I meant that it can be stored in a database that uh, is stored somewhere uh, out of memory. Uh, but yeah, I agree that it's uh, not very memory efficient um, and storing these keys and vectors in a database uh, can even uh, make uh, KNN even slower at test time. So overall we get better results, uh, easy domain adaptation without any training at the cost of much slower uh, test throughput. Uh, here's an example. Uh, at, imagine that at training time, we, had, we have seen the, uh, the sentence by the president, Joe Biden. And at test time, we now have the context that we need to continue that says that the president is, and we want to predict the next word. So at test, at, sorry, when we created the data store, we have seen this uh, context of by the president with the next word of Joe. And it is very likely that the context of by the president is similar in its um, in its in the hidden state that encodes it to the encoding of the president is by the president is similar to the president is, so it's very likely that this uh, key value pair will be retrieved in the k nearest neighbor search, and now uh, the the model will be able to utilize this key value pair at test time and predict the the word Joe as it appeared on test on training time. And the next, at, at the next time step, it is very likely that the context of by the president Joe is similar to the uh, test context of the president is Joe. So the model will be able to utilize this key value pair and predict uh, the word Biden at time t plus one. So as you can see, um, this uh, helps the model to predict uh, a word at every time step. But if we perform this canon search to retrieve the word Joe at time T, maybe we can uh, skip, we can save the expensive k nearest neighbor search when predicting the word Biden at time T plus one. And that's basically the, the, the key idea here in this work. Um, so, so far I told you that in the data store, we keep a key and a value where the key is a vector uh, that is the hidden state of the transformer while reading the a context. And the value is an integer that basically is the index of a word that should be predicted when you see this key. But now we add a single pointer, which is also uh, an integer. And this pointer points to the next, uh, the next data store entry that appeared in the training corpus. So in this case, uh, the, the key value pair of the context by the president and the value of Joe is now added a pointer to the entry that appeared next in the training, uh, in the training corpus that we build the, the data store from. So the, uh, the, the pair of by the president Joe is now pointing to its successor data store entry of by the president Joe with the value of Biden. So now every data store entry has a pointer to the uh, data store entry that appeared next. So how does it help us? Imagine that the time step T, we had the uh, hidden state of the language model H of T. We perform this uh, K nearest neighbor search and we got uh, some nearest neighbors. Each of them has a key, a val, and a value. We take these uh, keys and values, we compute the L2 uh, similarity and everything, compute a softmax, interpolate the resulting probability with the, um, with the probability of the language model. And then we predict a word by either argmox or sampling. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's, it's an orthogonal question of how do we predict the word. But let's say that we predicted the word Joe. Now in the next time step, time step, we can take the subset of these nearest neighbors that actually suggested that we should predict the word Joe and follow their pointers to the next time step. So in time step T plus one, we don't need to perform this expensive canon search because we already have uh, some data store entries that were pointed 
by um, data store entries from the previous time step. So the reason that these uh, data store entries are likely to be helpful at time t plus one is because at time t in the previous time step, um, we had some data store entries that were nearest neighbors and we continued all these nearest neighbors with the word Joe, but we also continued our, uh, our test state H of T with the same word of Joe. So if uh, the, these uh, data store entries were nearest neighbors at time T and we continued them with the same word that we continued our, um, our test context, it is very likely that these, uh, these new data store entries that were appointed by the previous nearest neighbors will be the nearest neighbors of H of T plus one and will be useful to predict the, uh, the worded time T plus one without performing the expensive KNN search. So we take these uh, remaining data store entries that we received, that we got thanks to the pointers. And we do exactly the same thing. We, inter we compute the L2 similarity, we uh, compute a softmax and interpolate uh, the resulting probability with the probability of the language model and we predict the word Biden. Now we do exactly the same thing. We take the subset of nearest neighbors that actually suggested the word that we eventually predicted Biden and follow them to the next time step T plus two. Now we imagine that the time T plus two, we do exactly the same thing of interpolating these nearest neighbors. In this case, we have only one and we interpolate it with the uh, probability of the language model. But now the Language, the overall prediction given by the interpolation uh, is of the, car, the, the word dot, and it is different than the, the value that uh, was suggested by any of the nearest neighbors. So in this case, we have no remaining uh, data store entries that we can follow to the next step. So in the next time step, we need to perform can and search again, because we're out of pointers uh, to follow. Are there any questions? Feel free to ask questions at any time. I know that it's uh, a little uh, um, uh, hard to grasp uh, for the first time. So uh, by adding these pointers between data store entries, we saved expensive KNN searches but the number of KNN keys decreased over time. So if we go back to this slide, in the first time, in, in, time, in, in time T, we had six uh, nearest neighbors that we achieved by performing the expensive KNN search, but only three of them that had the value of Joe uh, were useful at time T plus one. So at time T plus one, we had only three nearest neighbors. Uh, only one of them was, uh, was uh, actually suggested the word Biden that we eventually uh, predicted. So at time t plus two, we have only a single uh, data store entry. And at time t plus three, we won't have any remaining uh, data store entries and we will need to, um, to uh, compute the KNN, to perform KNN search again. So uh, the number of data store entries that we have decreases over time until we perform the KNN search again. So uh, we can do the following thing. Imagine that the training time we saw the sentence is President Biden. And also we saw another sentence that, that says with Joe Biden. And also a third sentence is Joseph Robinet. Now at test time, we follow this pointer and then uh, the prediction was Joe. So because the prediction, the predicted word is Joe, we cannot follow the next, the next pointer because the next pointer um, we could follow if the prediction was president. However, if we cluster data store entries whose, uh, whose keys are closed in the, in the high dimensional space, we can allow the, the model at test time to continue the traversal uh, using the pointers of other data store entries in the cluster uh, whose value is identical to the value that the, the model predicted. So in this case, the model predicted Joe and in the cluster, we have another data store entry 
whose value is Joe, so we can continue the traversal using, um, using the pointer of this uh, data store entry. So basically this clustering allows us to share pointers between uh, entries that have a similar, uh, similar key. I see that there is a question. Uh, hi, um, uh, I really like your animations, thanks. Um, about the complexity of the algorithm. How does saving the KNN links helps with time complexity? Okay, so um, the, the reason that, uh, this, uh, that saving these KNN links help with time complexity is because uh, as you can see here at time t plus one, we, uh, it basically saves KNN searches. So with, uh, with the, the baseline KNN LM, we perform the, the expensive KNN search at every time step. But in contrast, if we save these KNN links between uh, data store entries at time t plus one, we could retrieve a set of, um, of, data, of relevant data store entries, which are the data store entries that you see in, the, in this uh, middle column. Um, without performing the canon search. So instead of performing the canon search at time t plus one, we simply followed pointers from that were uh, correct in the previous time step. And when I'm, when I'm saying correct, I'm saying that uh, data store entries at time t, whose value was identical to the uh, prediction to, uh, that we eventually predicted, the word Joe in this case. So at time t, we predicted the word Joe we take the, the uh, data store entries uh, that suggested to predict Joe and follow their pointers to time t plus one. So at time t plus one, we have now three data store entries and we don't need to perform the expensive KNN search because we, get, we got an approximation of uh, this uh, expensive KNN search by just following pointers. Is, uh, is that clear? Feel free, uh, Joan and anyone to ask questions at any time. So we uh, clustered, um, we cluster similar keys and now we can share pointers between, uh, between different data store entries. And this sharing of data store pointers allows longer pointer traversal without backing up to KNN search, because um, even if the, the pointer is different, the, the value is different than uh, from the, the word that we actually predicted, we can, uh, we can follow other pointers that belong to the same cluster. We don't have to back up to KNN search too frequently. And also it allows to capture engrams uh, that were unseen at training time, because at training time we saw the, the engram of is President Biden and another engram of with uh, Joe Biden. But at test time, we can utilize uh, this, uh, this mechanism for engrams that were unseen. In this case, is Joe Biden. So if we uh, zoom out for a second and think about what we have here, we started with a trained language model, but now we also have a finite state automaton where the nodes are clusters of training examples as, the, uh, as encoded by the language model. So every node in the automaton is a cluster of data store entries. The edges are pointers between consecutive examples shared among all the uh, data store entries in the cluster. And the weights, the transition weights of this automaton are, the, uh, are simply the negative L2 distance between uh, the key of every such data store entry and H of T, which is the hidden state of the transformer at test time. So this also shows how the transition weight is not static as in uh, standard automata. The transition weights depend on the H of T, which is the, like, the test time representation uh, given from the uh, transformer. And now we can take the PLM, which is the probability, the standard probability that is given by the transformer and take the probability given by the automaton and simply interpolate them as KNNLM interpolates between, the, uh, between PLM and PKNN. Let's see an example. So 
Uh, imagine that we have this test context as before the president is. We take the last predicted word, feed it into the transformer to predict the next word, except that before we predict the next word, we take the hidden state, search for, uh, perform an expensive KNN search, and imagine that we got these uh, three uh, small dots here, the blue, do you see the small uh, blue, red, and green dots? These are um, data store entries that are retrieved from the KNN search. I remind you that each of them is a, a tuple of key value and a pointer, but also each of these data store entries has a cluster that they belong to. And in, this, in these clusters, there are other data store entries and uh, these, uh, these three automata states provide us with a distribution, a probability distribution for, uh, for predicting the next word. So now every, uh, every uh, data store entry in one of those uh, clusters gives us the, the value that it suggests that should be predicted. The, uh, the key is going to be uh, the to be used to compute the, uh, the transition weight. And the edge in the automaton is the pointer that we should follow if we choose to, uh, to use the, uh, the predicted word. So the, the negative L2 distance between the key and, the, and between uh, H of T, the uh, transformer's hidden state, is, the, uh, is, is going to be the transition weight. We sum over all the words that have, all data store entries that have the same uh, value. So all the, the data store entries that uh, suggest the word Joe are going to be, uh, we're going to sum their scores, perform the softmax, and we get this uh, P of auto, the probability that the, uh, the probability distribution that the automaton suggests. And by interpolating that with uh, PLM, the probability of the language model, we can predict the next word, uh, given using argmax or any kind of sampling. Now, uh, if we predicted this word Joe using argmax, argmax or sampling, we can now take only those uh, the subset of data so of edges that suggested the word Joe and simply follow uh, these edges and traverse the automaton. And then in every state we have in every time step we have several states that uh, we currently keep. So this, uh, so we traverse this automaton using multiple parallel traversals um, at every time step. Now, um, now after this traversal, we can uh, do exactly the same thing, except that now in this time step, we don't need to perform the expensive KNN search because we already have some states in the automaton that can give us the probability in the next step. And we can uh, predict the word Biden and uh, so on. We can uh, in every time step uh, follow the edges and continue traversing the automaton until we have no states left. So if in a certain time step, um, no, we, we cannot follow any edge in the automaton uh, because no edge has a value that is identical to the, that equals to the, uh, to, to the word that we actually predicted. Uh, we need to back uh, to uh, back off to do the expensive k nearest neighbor search again. Um, let me show you some evaluation. Uh, so we took the uh, the same data set that was used in previous work of Wikitext, and basically has the entire Wikipedia, and the y-axis is the perplexity, where lower is better. So uh, perplexity of one is like the, the, the perfect score that uh, you can achieve and higher is worse. And the X axis is the fraction of saved searches. Um, how many of the searches were saved uh, thanks to any, any uh, method? Ideally, we would want to have a low perplexity and save, uh, save as many uh, searches as we can. And we control the x-axis uh, by tuning the threshold of tau. So previously I told you that we resort back to KNN search when we don't have any pointers or any uh, automaton states uh, 
left to continue traversing from. But we can actually be more, um, uh, more aggressive about this and say that if tau is, for example, three, so we can say that whenever the number of automaton states that we have drops below three, we go back to and perform the expensive canon search. So if, if this tau is one, we, we encourage the model to perform as many traversals with a, as few canon searches as possible. And with tau of infinity, we perform the, the canon search at every time step. So the base language model achieves a perplexity of 18.66, and but it saves 100% 100% of the canon searches because that's the standard language model that does, does not perform any canon search, and using canon LM allows to reduce the perplexity, which is better, but uh, it doesn't save any of the searches. It saves uh, it saves a zero percent of the canon searches, so it is lower. And actually, we can uh, generalize these two approaches by just randomly selecting a fraction of the of the time steps that we want to perform the canon search. So uh, we can, for example, we can say that uh, uh, at random zero point three, uh, um, sorry, at about at random thirty percent of the cases we want to perform um, um, to to save the search and perform uh, to, to just use the, the base language model and the remaining 70% use KNLM. And uh, this allows us to interpolate between the base language model that doesn't use the data store at all and the uh, full KNN, KNLM that performs KNN search at every time step. Another possible baseline is the adaptive retrieval method of uh, Jun Chen, who is also an author of our paper. But uh, before that, he uh, he, he he's proposed an approach called adaptive retrieval that uh, trains a small model that based on the confidence of the base language model decides whether we should use, um, query the, K, uh, the KNN data store and perform the, the K nearest neighbor search. Or uh, if the, the language model is confident enough, we can maybe skip the, the expensive K nearest neighbor search and just use the, the language model. And as you can see, uh, this adaptive retrieval allows to save uh, uh, to save some of the of the search of the k nearest neighbor searches uh, with lower perplexity than just randomly choosing in which time steps we want to um, to perform the nearest neighbor search uh, or not. Using our automaton, uh, this uh, we call our approach retomaton. We uh, we can reduce the perplexity even further both at, in the left side of the x-axis where uh, tau is infinity and we don't save any KNN searches and both uh, in the right side of the x-axis where we can save uh, more than 80% of the k-nearest neighbor searches while matching the perplexity of 16.65 of the full KNNLM. So basically we can achieve the same perplexity as KNNLM with uh, while saving more than 80% of the expensive k nearest neighbor searches. Uh, as I told you in the beginning of the talk, we can also use these approaches for domain adaptation. So in this case, we took language model that was trained on uh, the, the WMT news crawl and then tested on a data set of law documents. And the data store in this case was constructed from the, the uh, the, the, the new domain, the, 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 the law domain. So first, as you can see in, in the right side, in the upper right side, the base language model performs very poorly because the base language model was trained on news, but it was tested on uh, law documents. However, KNNLM allows reducing the perplexity down to 12 uh, by building, by constructing the data store on the new domain. Adaptive retrieval allows to reduce the perplexity across all, uh, all the, the, the different configurations of uh, saved searches. However, our approach, Retomaton, allows to reduce the perplexity uh, by much more. And as you can see in this case as well, on the uh, bottom right part, we can save more than 80% of the KNN searches while 
reducing the perplexity below the perplexity of KNNLM. Are there any questions about uh, this slide or anything that I said earlier? Okay, so the question that we asked ourselves at this point was that this domain adaptation is great, but how does this compare to the, the standard uh, fine tuning approach on the new domain? So um, uh, these approaches allow us to perform domain adaptation without, uh, without any fine tuning or training, but the standard way of doing domain adaptation is simply to fine tune the model on the new domain. So these are the results that I showed you so far. The base LM uh, achieves a very high perplexity of above 100. Uh, Ken NLM and adaptive retrieval allows to reduce the perplexity down to 12. And our automaton allows to further reduce the perplexity um, to uh, 10.49. However, fine tuning the language model on the new domain is, a, is actually a better way of achieving uh, domain adaptation to the new domain. However, if we construct the data store or our automaton uh, using the, the fine-tuned language model, we can reduce the perplexity uh, compared to the base language model to 7.81 using the previous approaches. And using our automaton approach, we can reduce the perplexity even more. So overall, fine-tuning is an efficient way for domain adaptation, but using our automaton on top of the fine-tuned model allows to reduce the perplexity by 16 uh, additional, per, uh, by, by a relative gain of uh, 16 additional percent. Uh, we also asked ourselves, so um, our automaton approach is based on two main ideas, two core ideas, point, saving pointers between data store entries and clustering of similar entries. And we asked ourselves what brings the most gains, which of them is more important. So this is uh, the figure that I showed you before where the, the green curve is our automaton. And we also trained a model, um, actually we didn't train, we just ran it. It's something that doesn't, doesn't need any training without the clustering. So now we only saved pointers between consecutive data store entries, but without performing clustering. So this is uh, equivalent to an automaton where every, um, every state has only a single outgoing edge. As you can see on the left, uh, on the left side of the x-axis, the performance of this without clustering uh, ablation is very close to the, the, the performance of our automaton, which means that when we, um, when we don't care about saving searches, we just want to get to the lowest perplexity possible, uh, saving the pointers is sufficient. However, clustering helps mostly when we try to uh, save as many searches as possible on the right uh, hand side of the X axis, where you can see that the, uh, the gray curve deviates from the green curve. So uh, the bottom line is that pointers allow us to get uh, the, 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 the most gains when we don't care about saving searches, we just want to improve the results. But uh, clustering allows us to perform longer consecutive uh, automaton traversals without backing up to frequent KNN searches. Uh, here are a few examples. So we uh, collected the, um, the, the sequences that were given the highest probability by the automaton from the validation set. So as you can see in length of three, uh, the most common engrams that were given the highest uh, probability are comma and the, comma but the, really uh, common um, uh, trigrams. In length of the six, we get slightly more specific uh, six grams of like the streets have no name, which is a name of a song by the Irish band U2. Also the Department of Transportation, uh, M dot. And in length, length of 10, we get uh, more specific sequences. And I filtered out from the list of length of 10 sequences that were already uh, uh, that were uh, that appeared verbatim at the training time. So uh, to show that uh, our approach does not only uh, memorize n-grams from the training set, but it is also able to construct longer uh, and longer 10 grams, which are all the 10 grams that you see in the right column. 
by composing uh, by composing them from smaller engrams. Additionally, the longest um, the longest sequence that the uh, that our approach was able to uh, predict in the uh, in the dev set of Wikitext was a uh, uh, 236 token long sequence that appeared verbatim in the training in the training set and also in the validation set. So this is a very um, a rare um, case where the same uh, long sequence appear in both training and validation. But I'm showing it here to show that how Retomaton allows to dynamically retrieve chunks, long chunks uh, of text from the training data using a single KNN search instead of performing the expensive KNN search at every time step. So the, our approach uh, could perform the expensive KNN search once only at the beginning of this long sequence and, uh, and then for 235 uh, time steps, just follow the pointer instead of performing the expensive KNN search. So to summarize, um, given a trained language model and a corpus, we construct uh, an automaton. And we show that the synergy between a symbolic automaton and a neural language model, the key points here are, the key points here are saving pointers between training entries and clustering of entries into automaton states and to allow the automaton to have a dynamic transition, um, transition scores. Uh, using this synergy allows to achieve lower complexity than the base language model while saving up to 83% of the KNN searches compared to the baseline KNN LM. The creation of this automaton is fully unsupervised we didn't need any additional training data uh, to, um, to, uh, to, um, to build the automaton. And it can be constructed from either the original training data, the same training data that the transformer language model was trained on or from another domain. And with that, I'd love to take questions.